The Torah shares with us a prophecy. Uh, it's not such a happy prophecy, but it's, there's a real life lesson that we need to internalize from the parasha. It says, Ki tolid banim ubnei banim, there'll be a come time that you're going to have children and grandchildren, we're going to grow and we're going to prosper. And we're going to sin. And the sin is going to be one of idolatry. You're going to find pictures and statues and all types of images of the heavens, the earth and whatnot that, that fascinates us. And we're going to worship them. And the Torah tells us that we're not going to last in the land of Israel. Vasita hara bene Hashem, going to do the evil in the do evil in the eyes of God, and He's going to throw us out. And He testifies the heavens and the earth. Ki abedun maher ma'ala aretz. You're going to be taken out of the land, the land that we inherited with our blood, with our guts, with our effort, our toil. This magnificent land of Israel, we're going to lose it due to idolatry. And what happens? We're going to be put into the diaspora. That's who we are today. All over the world. There are Jews in every corner of the world. And guess what happens to them in these far ends of the world? A very fascinating sound. And when you reach these far corners of the world, you're going to worship another idol. An idol made out of wood, an idol made out of stone. And a very fascinating thing is going to happen. And you'll seek out to reach out to God, and He'll accept our repentance. What needs to be clarified is, I don't get it. We're in Israel, the land that we live in, the land that we conquered, and we go and we do idolatry. So now, we go out into the world, and what happens? It should be our rectification. And we continue doing idolatry. So what did we gain? We're back to square one. Nothing really changed. You know, sometimes uh, you, you get involved in, in some type of activity that's improper, right? And you, and you try to correct yourself. And then in the process of correcting yourself, you trip. And while you're tripping, you slip and you say a bad word. Oh, okay. So I, everything I tried to do, I just messed up. How do I get ahead of myself? Here, they were in the land, they got thrown out, and what happens? They're doing idolatry again. It's ve'evin. How did we become better? How does galut, exile, enhance our beings? At the end of the day, we're at the same point. To which this teaches us a very fascinating lesson to the nature of a Jew. There's one little detail that I left out that is so important because it changes the entire scenery. And that is, when we were in the land of Israel, and things are going great, we explored other idols. And it was a very bad sin. And God said, you know what? Go out into the diaspora. You're too comfortable. You're too complacent. You need to be out in the world. And we went out into the world. But you know what happened? It's a different idol. It's Etz Ve'evin. And this takes place, the Torah tells us, in the end of time, which is the third galut, that's where we are. Etz is referring to Christianity. It's not that. Evan is Mecca. It's a different type of religions that came much later. It's not the classical idolatry that took place in the type of barbarism where they worship sun gods and moon gods and Thors and all these different people. It's the new ideology of Etz Evin, but it comes with a little twist. The twist is when we're in Galut, you know what it does to us? We don't have a choice. The Odufe, they kind of come and burn us to the stake if we don't worship the cross. And how many thousands of Jews have died in the name of Allah through Mecca, through the Islamic wars? What happens is we're initiating, we make our mistakes, we go into Galut. Hashem says, oh yeah, idolatry, now I'm going to force you. Now you have to do it. Now when you have to do it, you know what the Jew says? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't tell me what to do. That's the nature of a Jew. Don't tell me what to do. If I want to decide to do idolatry, it's up to me.
It's my, it's my own ideology. But the second you're forcing me, I say, so why? Why should I do it? A stone or a piece of stick, you're going to tell me created the whole world? What, are you nuts? You ask me to act crazily? No, 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 I don't buy into that. And you know what? We have a nature, we'll be Moser Nefesh, we'll give our lives to Hashem because we're not going to give in to things that are absurd to us. But it's only because we're being forced that we come up with such a dynamic that we have to make a change. So it is a rectification going into Galut. Yes, we did idolatry and now we're being forced to it and now we're changing our ways. Hashem says to us, don't worry. When we'll reach out with all our heart and our might, we will find the answers. And that's the days that we are in. This is all taking place in our Chita Yamim, where, yes, there are, there are challenges out there. There are missionaries trying to steal our children, and, there, and there's Isla Islamophobias that are, that are out there. They're trying to influence us. Every other day, they're tr taking girls out of Aza and different parts of Israel that were hostage to, to Muslim husbands. This is real. This is real in our world today. And you'll, when you'll reach out to Hashem with our whole hearts and our whole soul, we will actually find Him. And that will be the beginning of the end of this horrific exile and our future redemption. Thank you.